all blessings flow. Amen. Let us now take a moment to turn our attention to our scripture this morning from uh, the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. Amen. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. There we find our scripture reading for this morning. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms. Fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength so he leaping up stood and walked and entering the temple with them walking leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. May God bless now the hearing, reading, and importation of his word in our lives. Amen. Amen. Let's prepare now our minds for the message. Amen. As God will share with us, amen, from the Word of God. There in Acts chapter 3, the first 10 verses, we find the text for our message this morning. And I want to share with you more than enough. I'm sure that at some point or another, many of us have uh, been at some family gathering uh, where there was uh, a potluck, uh, a spread of food on the table. And as we looked across the spread, uh, we saw different things on the table, some dishes that really caught our attention, wet our appetite, and got us uh, really interested. Amen. And uh, we really would have just piled on that particular item on our plate and just overdid it. I mean, we would have just really uh, heaped it on richly. Uh, but we didn't because we knew that uh, there were other family members and friends who were gathered at that particular event. And uh, so we went lightly. Amen. Uh, hoping that perhaps there would be some leftovers after everybody has gone through and got what they wanted. Uh, but we really had our eyes set uh, on uh, that particular dish that uh, we were interested in. Uh, but uh, we were scarce in our portion and, and we went on through the line and got some of this and that. And, and as we were eating, uh, we realized that the portion that we had was really more than enough. 
Amen. And we got done eating our food and eating all that we had on our plate. And we realized that uh, we didn't have room to actually go back and to get uh, that second or third helping that we thought we would get at the outset uh, only because it was more than enough. Yes, this is how we sometimes view life as if there is not enough of this or that to go around. If we look at life through the eyes of Washington and the government, we are tempted to become paralyzed with the thoughts that uh, there is not enough money and we're just moments away from annihilation and destruction. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we look at things and how they're going now with the, uh, the economy in chaos, gas prices are mm -hmm. on the rise, uh, inflation, people can't find baby formula. I mean, it's enough to make one think that everything is about to fall apart and that we're going to find ourselves in sudden ruin. Mm -hmm. Someone would ask the question, what are you going uh, to do today? And then somebody else might answer and respond the same thing I did on yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, well, what might that be? I'm going to sit in front of the church and see if somebody will give me some change. That man that carried out those actions is seen in our text this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had become so accustomed to just uh, receiving the change that some folk would toss uh, into his bucket. It had just become commonplace that people would pick him up daily, carry him over to the temple, and he would just simply do a repeat of what happened on yesterday. Just a cycle of placing a band-aid over a surgical cut had become the order of the day until one day a fellow by the name of Peter, you might know him, passed by with John with this phrase on his lips, silver and gold, Mm -hmm. Have I none? But such as I have, I'll give unto you. This phrase would ultimately change the life of this man who had become accustomed to uh, getting just enough each day to get by. But then on this particular day, he would discover that God had in store for him more than enough. Mm. This story is a beautiful illustration of what Christ has done for every born again child of God. It also pictures what he desires to do for every lost sinner, every individual who have found themselves in need in life. Our Savior can literally transform the tragedy of life fettered by sin into a life set free by salvation. Mm -hmm. He can do it for us. Yes. What a thrilling thought yes. and truth this is. I may not have much, but I want you to understand this, that what I have in Christ is more than enough. Mm. What God can do for you and I through the Holy Spirit is more than enough. Sometimes we feel compelled to do with money what God wants done in the Spirit. Mm. 
And we've got to take our eyes off of the almighty dollar, as we call it, and place our eyes on the actual almighty God who is in charge of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. who owns the world and all that dwells therein. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us turn our eyes here to this third chapter of Acts, these first ten verses, and in it we can find that which would propel our own lives to live life on a higher plane, knowing that God has got it all in control. I mean, we can learn something here from this interaction that this man would have in his relationship uh, during this brief exchange with Peter and John. Uh, as he was about, as they were about to go into the temple, we find here this confession of faith that would arise out of the interaction. Look at verse 4. Fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention. Expecting to receive something from them. This man expected when Peter told him to look at us that he would perhaps reach down into his pocket and pull out some change as he was customary to receive it from the passerbys. Um, but my brothers and sisters, that's not what Peter was about to do. Peter was about to change this man's life forever. Um, as he would tell him to look at him, and the man in exchange would give them his attention. That's what he had done right in this exchange, is that when he was asked, he did what was required of him, and he gave them their, his attention. I recall one time going through the drive through and a man was there suggesting that he was hungry. And, uh, and so I was going to get him what, something to eat. I asked him there, I said, what do you want? And uh, I was going to have him to tell uh, the woman behind the register just what it was that he wanted. And uh, and he got indignant. Mm. Says, I, I don't I don't want nothing from the menu. I don't want nothing. Off. I, I, I just want the money. <laughs> Needless to say, that didn't go well in his favor. Uh, I went on and ordered what I was about to order and I drove on off and uh, he didn't get nothing out of that exchange. <laughs> Uh, but this man here was a bit different. Uh, Peter said, look at us. And he decided that his situation was dire and that he was in such uh, a position that he would just go ahead and do what was asked of him. And he gave them his attention. Now he didn't exactly receive what he thought he was going to receive, but he still had sense enough to give them his attention. Yes, yes. Um, Peter then went on and said to him those infamous words, those famous words rather, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you. And he went from there and he gave this confession of faith. He said to this man, I want you to rise up and walk. Now, my brothers and sisters, when we would find ourselves in 
a position of need in our lives, we ought to learn a lesson from this man. Not only did he give them his attention as he was asked, but he responded to their instructions as they gave them. He, they told him, rise up and walk. And there are a whole lot of folk when they would receive the instructions within and turn argue with God. When God would tell them what to do next, they would say, but you don't understand. I've been in this condition for a long time. You don't understand that I was dropped off here this morning by uh, friends and relatives and, and they sat me here. You don't understand. And we would have been trying to argue and convince them that uh, we can't do what they want. Just drop some money in the bucket and go on about your business and I'll take it from there. But this man was not that way. Yes, uh, he would experience faith in his life. Yes, uh, and he would begin to have his life changed. As Peter would say, I can't give you what you're asking for, but what I can give you is the gift of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And my brothers and sisters, what God would give us is what we would ultimately need most in life. We might think that what we need most is a little money for the bill. What we think we might need most, uh, yes, is a little gas money. What we think that we might need most at the time is this thing or that thing. And God is saying, no, no, before you go on to get that, I need you to first of all receive the greater gift in your life. Yeah. I would hear in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. It's not that God is not interested in providing for us. It's not that God is not interested in taking care of our needs in life, putting food in our mouths, yes, putting clothes on our backs, but what God is trying to share with us in the text is that we've got to put first thing first. Yes, before we try to fill our pockets, Yes, with the riches of this world, we've got to make sure that we've got in our heart what we need. Amen. And so God prepares this man for transformational living. God prepares him for a whole new perspective on life. And that which he wants begged for, God is about to do something in his life that he does not have to beg like he had been begging from each and every day that has gone by in his past. Hallelujah, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he These confessions of faith are born out of long walks with God. They are the birth uh, out of a marinating with the master. Well, let me see if I can break that down. Uh, there, there are some meats, there are some foods that you can't just throw in the oven, uh, turn the temperature up to 350 or 400 degrees and, and come back an hour later and expect it to taste the way you want it to taste. <laughs> I mean, there are some meats that need to be dry rub. There yes, are some yes. meats that need to be marinated. Uh -huh. uh, then sealed up and placed in the refrigerator, yes, for an hour or two or perhaps even overnight. Yeah, so that they can uh, ingest and lock in the flavors. Uh, yeah, so that when you finally take them out and place it in the oven or in the smoker. Yes, uh, all of those 
flavors and the richness thereof, uh, yes, will be locked into it. And, and when it comes out with all of its richness and juice, uh, yes, you can taste flavor in every single bite. That comes from taking some time out. Yes, yes putting some love in it. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. yes. And just as a cook uh, would do in the kitchen, yes, uh, so it is that you and I must do in our own personal lives with God. Uh, if we really want to get something out of our lives, we've got to put something into our lives. Yes. We've got to spend some time with him. That's, right. That's how Peter knew that he could not give this man silver and gold. He didn't have, yes, the, the physical finances that this man was looking for, but he did know that he had something else because he had spent some time with God along the way. He walked with him. He talked with him. He went up to the Mount of Transfiguration with him. Yes, he had seen and experienced what Jesus Christ could actually do in one's life. And it's because of that ongoing relationship that he had with the ups and downs, with the bumps and the bruises, with the indecisiveness at times that Peter experienced along the way, that he knew that Jesus could do something in this man's life. And even if it's not for you, it's somebody that you might know, somebody that you might work with on the job, you know that God has just what it is that they need in their lives only because you have walked with him personally and talked with him as well. Yes, and so when they would show up with desperation in their eyes, you know that God has the solution for them because you've seen him do it in days gone by. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Right in your own life. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we've got to have our own testimony, our own confession of faith in our life. We have to have a personal encounter with faith. Yes, and it would cause us to be committed enough to pay attention when God is speaking in our lives, when God is trying to get our attention. Yes, we've got to do like this man did he paid attention? He perked up. When God don't say what we want him to say in our lives, when God don't fix it the way we think he ought to fix it in our life, yes, we ought not get indignant, uh, yes, and mad like that man in the drive-thru. Uh, but we ought to act like this man in the text. Yes, uh, we don't hang in there long enough to see what God's going to do in the deviations and the twists and turns. Uh, yes, uh, when God says, no, not this way, we ought to just hang in there long enough to see which way he's going to take us. Yes, yes, Lord Jesus. Told this man to rise up and walk, but he didn't leave him there to do it on his own. Look at verse 7. Yes, uh, when he would tell him to rise up, yes, and walk, Peter would then move on and take him by the right hand and lift him up. He assisted him in the task that he had just commanded him to perform. Listen, as he was in the act of moving in the direction of faith in his life, Yes, uh, something began to happen in his body. In his obedience. Yes, uh, something began to take place on his behalf. We must muster up a faith response rather than a reactionary emotional response. 
Yes, we must believe God for the answer to our world and community crises that we experience from one day to the next. As Peter would reach out his hand to this man and give him a hand, yes, a uh, uh, change began to take place. The text says, and immediately. Uh, his feet and his ankle bones began to do something. Yes, they, they began to receive strength. And I don't know if you've ever been down before. If you've ever been down long enough to reach a point and a place where uh, your, your, your arms or your hands or your feet or knees uh, have not operated in such a long time that they've lost muscle mass. They, yeah, well. they, have, they have become weak. Uh, you, you just can't just uh, hop back up. You've been off your feet for three long months after surgery and, and now it's time for you to, to begin to, to get back up and to get back in operation but you discover that you're weak in the knees because you've been down so long. This man was weak and his muscles were weak but, but immediately because he would obey in faith and he would act on that which was, which was committed and commanded to him. Yes, uh, his feet and his ankle bones uh, received strength. Yes, uh, no time for therapy. Yes, uh, no longer. Yes, uh, three times a week. Uh, yes, with, with ten different exercises. Uh, yes, uh, so that he can ultimately get to a place uh, months down the road where he began to take some baby steps with a walker in tow. Yes, yes. No, he just simply obeyed God and God did the miraculous in his life. He immediately received strength without therapy, without exercise. Uh, yes, yeah, just with the touch and hand of Peter. Yes, assisting him in getting up. Yes, the power of God moved in yes. him and through him. While we're looking at Peter and his assistance in this man's life, taking him by the hand and lifting him up, yes, can we take that in application just two or three steps further? Yes, uh, because my brothers and sisters, that is why discipleship is much needed component yes. in the Christian faith. Yes. Too often we just simply yes. give the word uh, yes, uh, and we leave folk to themselves. Mm -hmm. my Lord. Amen. But my brothers and sisters, God is calling us yes. to walk alongside of folk yes. long enough for their muscles to receive strength yes. in their lives. Yes. I mean, we share with them the plan of salvation. We pray with them, uh, yes, as they would give a confession of faith in their life. And then we would turn away and walk away from them with our chest stuck out, feeling like we've done, yes, yeah, something. Uh, yes, that's a start. Yes, yes uh, but we've got to get them planted inside of a church. We've got to get them planted in the body of Christ. Uh, yes, because it's that sharpens out. Uh, I, 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 I like to uh, cook a little bit every now and then. Yes. yes uh, uh, and, and my best knives, uh, yes, will get dull at times. Yes. Uh, I, I've, got to, I've got to turn the stone now. Yes. Uh, and run the knife across the stone back and forth uh, to sharpen that knife. Uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, in, in our daily living, uh, we can't go through life without ever coming in contact, uh, yes, with somebody else to sharpen us in our walk and in our faith. Yes, we sometimes wonder why it is that we're struggling, why it is 
is that we're having such a difficult time, dark days, uh, yes, long, difficult nights, uh, yes, because we are not allowing ourselves to be lifted by somebody else every now and then. We must go beyond a mere introduction to faith. Yes, we must teach folk to wait on God. Oh, during our tough times in life. Yes. Not only must we have a confession of faith and act on our faith, uh, but we must have expressions of faith. God is looking for us to do something with our faith. I mean, God wants us to have a real living faith in our lives. Look at verse 8. This man, having had his encounter with Peter, finding strength in his bones and joints to get up yes. after being down for so long. Text says that he was leaping up he stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Catch that. I mean, how many individuals receive what we need from God and then we turn and walk in the opposite direction? Mm -hmm. Wow. We all marinate on that for a minute. How many times have God blessed us? How many times was I back up against the wall and we said, Lord, if you deliver me this time, Lord, if you take me out of this set of circumstances, Lord, if you get me out of jail, Lord, if you get me off this bed, Lord, if you do this thing or that thing in my life, and no sooner than God deliver us, we find ourselves, uh, yes, far from God. Uh, but not this man. Uh, he entered the temple with them. The same two who would share and impart faith in his life, the same two. Yes, uh, who would give him the gift of healing in his life and allow him to experience uh, walking again. He would team up with them uh, and go in the same direction they were headed in. I mean, if they would have uh, the spiritual maturity in their lives, if they would have such a relationship with God in their lives that that they can give him that much. Uh, yes, uh, he would he would he would find it uh, wise that he would continue on the journey to see what else God would do in his lives. And you and I, it would do us well also to see what else God is trying to say to us. What else is God trying to do in our lives? God can do more than give us lunch money. Yes, he can. Can I get a witness? Amen. Mm -hmm. God can do more than give us a little bit of gas to get where we're going. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Yeah, he can. Yeah, there are, there are some folk so much. who know that we frequent the church house, know that we have regular worship in our lives. Yeah. I mean, they'll say stuff to us on our way to church. I mean, have you ever heard some of the sayings that folk will say to us yeah. on our way to church? Yeah. Say one for me. Uh, pray, pray a prayer for me when you get to church. Uh, you know God knows my heart. I mean, they'll just simply say these types of things, uh, yes, uh, as we go.
go to church. Uh, yes, they, they want us to, by proxy, represent them at church. Mm -hmm. No, not this man. His encounter with faith transformed his way of both thinking and living. Yes, uh, he entered in with them. Yes, we cannot live in the shadows of mama's faith. We must exercise our own level of faith. We must put some muscles on our faith. Yes, uh, tell somebody this week. Yes, uh, walk into church with me. Uh, yes, that, that's our exercise for this week. That, that's our homework. Uh, yes, uh, as we go along and as we run into folk, uh, yes, who would just simply say, say one for me. Yes, uh, why don't you encourage them this week? Why don't you come with me? Yes, yes and we can say one together. Yes, mm. my Lord. Uh, the songwriter said, uh, my brothers and sisters, look at my hands. They look new. Look at my feet. They do too. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, that's, that could be this man's testimony yeah. today. Yeah. Yes, he would go in with them uh, walking, leaping, and praising God. Catch that if you will. Yes, uh, it goes up just another level. Yes, on each round, uh, he was walking. Yes, uh, that was something in and of itself because he had been carried and dropped off there in front of the temple. Yes, uh, but he went beyond just merely walking. Uh, yes, the text says that he was... Can I get a witness? <laughs> yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, and if that wasn't good enough, uh, he was also praising. Yes, uh, I can hear him say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, uh, I, I can hear him say, praise the Lord. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, I heard the text say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, if God has done something for you, you ought to say so. Yes, if God has blessed you, if God has kept you, if God has never left you, you ought to say so. Yes, somebody ought to be like that woman who came back to say thank you. Yes, uh, my, my, my brothers and sisters, uh, when I was growing up, we were trained that when somebody give you something, you ought to say thank you. When somebody do something for you, you ought to say thank you. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you ought not just simply take it and run away with it, but you ought to come back and say thank you. Yes, somebody ought to thank God. Yes, for all that He is doing in our lives. Somebody ought to lift up holy hands. Somebody ought to put their hands together and just simply say thank you. Somebody ought to say change. Yes, Lord. I'm so glad He changed me. Yes, what a wonderful change has come over me. Somebody ought to come back and say thank you. I thank God that this man was not ashamed. Yes, to come back uh, and praise the Lord. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Yes, he lived his life out loud. Yes, sir. My brothers and sisters, in Matthew 14, 17, listen, we have here only five loaves and two fresh. Jesus said, bring them here to me. Mm. Yes, uh, and my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, uh, God would take that little and turn it into much. Yes, uh, and the people would eat and have leftovers. Uh, somebody ought to say thank you. Yes, uh, if my brothers and sisters, after you ate last night, you had something to put into a container and stick over in the refrigerator for lunch tomorrow, yes, uh, you ought to say thank you. Yes, uh, 
if you were able, uh, yes, to go to the restaurant, sit down and order something off the menu, you ought to say thank you. Yes, if you got a car to drive, you ought to say thank you. If you got a roof over your head, you ought to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Good. Good. So good. This man was not worried about what folk would say about him. We're worried about who would talk about him and whisper under their breath and call him different derogatory names. Uh, yes, uh, uh, no, he wasn't worried about that. Yeah, look at verse 9. All the people saw him walking and praising God. Yes, uh, the people saw him walking and praising God. Yeah. Let me say it again. The people saw him Thank you, Lord. walking yeah. and praising God. Yeah. Yes. I, he, 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 never mind me. I, I, I got to get my praise on. Yes. Ne never mind me. I, I got to shout right here. Come yes. I, never mind me. I, I got to say thank you Jesus. Uh, we used to have this saying that went around. I don't know where it come from. It was a saying that passed on through the generations. Uh, but I had to get rid of this saying. It's, that was a saying that said that there are two things that you don't talk about in life. You know what they were? Well, Politics and religion. Well, mm. Yes. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, uh, I, 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 I have to say so. Because I don't want no rats crying out for yes. me. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I can't have... Yes, uh, a Sunday morning religion. Uh, yes. yes, contained in four walls. Uh, God bless me. Uh, yes, yes uh, and I get my shot on in yes. the building. Uh, yes, but then I keep it to myself Monday through Saturday. Yes, I gotta tell somebody. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Somebody know Jeremiah, don't you? All right. Yes, like fire shot up in my bones. Can't keep it to myself. Yes, yeah, somebody ought to tell somebody. Yes, uh, don't you dare keep it to yourself. Don't you dare stay quiet on God. Don't you dare sit on your hands when God done blessed you and kept you in life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This man didn't get the memo. Yeah, that he wasn't supposed to talk about religion. Yes, uh, and uh, on the other hand, he heard uh, yes, the gospel writer yes, uh, telling us that we ought to go into the world yes. preaching the gospel, uh, yes, teaching them to observe all he heard. Yes, Lord. He heard Jesus telling us, yes, that we've got to tell the good news. Yes, Lord. yes. yes over the hills and everywhere. Yes, he was walking and praising God at the same time. Yes, he didn't care who saw him. Yes, uh, he had not walked before. And now he could. Yes, my brothers and sisters, when God would give us new life, yes, it ought to excite us to the extent that we put a smile on our face, yeah. clapping in our hands yeah. and running in our feet. That's right. Yes, because God has done something for yeah. us. God has given us more than enough. This man had asked for a handout. This man would ask them to place something in his bucket. But in turn, Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto you. And I would dare not say, it's this man's testimony today. That what Peter had to offer him was more than enough. And I want to share with you today right where you are, right where you sit, that what God has to offer you may not look like what you asked for, but it's more than enough. Mm -hmm. 
that man was not in a position to go and do some handyman work. He was not in a position uh, to stand out in front of Home Depot and try to get some work. Uh, he was not in a position, uh, yes, uh, to ask anybody if they needed a hand or some help uh, so he could earn a few dollars uh, for a day's work. But when he had an encounter with Christ, it was more than enough. It was more than what he had bargained for. Right here, right now, in your life and in my life, God is letting us know and reassuring us that God has more than enough for each one of us. If we would but dare take him at his word, if we would but dare give him our attention, if we would but dare follow him to the place where he resides, yes. certainly God will do the rest. Yes, yes. God will give us just what it is that we stand in need of. So I want to invite you right now to give God your heart and your hand. Lord, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. And we pray on behalf of each individual who is making a decision in their lives right now, even now. Lord, to come to you with open hearts and their arms stretched out wide. Lord, trying to get where you are. Lord, we pray that you would touch them right now. That you would bless them. That you would hear their feeble cry. And receive them unto yourself. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.